you're a rat or a sex offender in prison, you're gonna get killed over it, period. That's just what's gonna happen. Now, what I've never understand is if you are a rat and a and a and a chomo, as they say, chomo, yeah. Why why would you why would you even want to like take the gamble of walking on a general population yard? Well, they don't knowing... have they don't have protective custody in the feds. So you're you're fucked. You're either. fucked. Okay. You know now if you're like a big informant or whatever, the feds generally take care of you and won't send you to a place like Victorville because they know you're going to get killed. <laughs> You know, or then they, the feds also, in that same token, like look at Whitey Bulger. They shipped him to a USP knowing that he'd get killed. He got killed within like 10 minutes of landing there. So the feds, you know, they, they know they, what they're they doing. They can design that if they need to, and it's an unfortunate thing. Yeah, I mean, basically, when you go into prison, you're, if you're in California doing time anywhere, uh, except for some of these lower level yards, like the one and two yards in California State aren't too bad. You know, I just paroled from a one yard. It was, a piece of cake you know but this was equivalent to like a level three or four you know the fed if you're talking about the state and the fed um being white obviously is a prerequisite to be a packer wood but then you have to have clean paperwork there's ways to have on paperwork there's ways to show if you're not a sex offender not a rat you gotta be you gotta have clean paperwork so you can't be a sex offender can't be a snitch but you also have to put in work to like prove your solidarity, especially if you're a kid. I was 24 years old now, went in when I was 23. By the time I get to Victorville, I'm 24. And you have to be on like a hit squad and you have to take somebody out, whether that be stabbing them. That's not what I did, but I was with a group of people who wore steel toe boots and we stomped somebody off the yard. And, and the reason that we did that for this particular person was he had used his Selly's beard trimmers to shave his balls. Right, and his cell, his cell, it should be a one-on-one -on -one issue, right? But they decided that that was, that he crossed the line. So they get me and like three other kids, we're in our early 20s, to stomp him out on a volleyball court. He's playing volleyball serving and we had directions. When he goes to serve, just go up to him and take off on him and then stomp him out and, and do not stop until you don't see him moving anymore. And you told me, and I remember you telling me that the, the culture is so fake that it's some things are good for some people, other rules and politics don't apply to others. And it's like, you know, a guy with your intellect kind of saw through a lot of this, but the, the, the burden on you was you had to put in work, whether you liked it or not. It was Mando that you did that. And that puts you, any any inmate in a bad place. And I, and and do you see that as a moment for reform in the in the prison system? Is, is that something that you you? Like? I don't think that's something that can be changed from outside influence or anything. I don't think any legislation or anything can change that. Um, but I mean, yeah, what you were saying um, is very accurate, and I've said it a lot of times, like on my YouTube channel, how. Prison is the fakest culture ever, and I'm no, I've never presented myself as a solid inmate. I was never a good convict. You know, I'm not a rat. I'm not. I've never locked it up over a debt, and I'm not a sex offender. But I was never. I always. I pulled a lot of dope fiend moves in prison. You know, stuff that I look back on. I'm like, I cannot believe I got away with that. You have to be chameleonic. You have to have adaptability. Be able to wear different masks to survive that kind of atmosphere. And it's favoritism. Maybe I can, because I'm popular with the group of people running this particular prison that are white, I can shave my balls with my Sally's, um, <laughs> you know, beer trimmer. But then this other guy who's a loner that has no friends does it and they want to stab him or stomp him out with a bunch of 23 year old kids. So wow. it's, it's very much like that. It's very, it's pumped up, hyper bravado, um, hyper masculinity. Sure. And it's, it's lame. Sure. I mean, why would you, in, you always hear these guys in prison, oh man, you know, that would, if I PC'd up, that would fuck off my entire career. It's like your career. This is your career being, a, being good at being in prison. If you're a heroin addict and you're going and knocking off liquor stores at gunpoint, you deserve to be in prison. I don't care. Big time. I'm, I'm a heroin addict. I've never done anything like that. But if you're so sick with your addiction and you're selling drugs, now I know what people would say to that. You're perpetuating the opioid crisis you're destroying other people's lives but people tend to forget that it's consensuality in this in this in this country we have a problem with that like prostitution gambling drug addiction it's like 
if you want to make that argument that I'm killing people, why aren't we indicting R.J. Reynolds? Why aren't we indicting Budweiser, fucking McDonald's, for that matter? And these people are killing, slaughtering people it's with preventable point. deaths, but they have special interest groups and lobbyists to back them up. So there's some hypocrisy, and it's much deeper than just this cosmetic issue. You know, it's uh, some sort of shadow global economy with addiction. We monopolize it. If it's illegal, we have bigger profit gains than if we don't, et cetera, et cetera. Just briefly, this is what, I can wrap it up in like one minute of what's wrong, in my opinion, with the prison industrial complex. In the late 1970s, you saw a big rise in neoliberalism. And what happened is legislation started being corporatized in a much higher degree than it used to be. Their social institutions, such as the military prison, uh, the military industrial complex, the prison industrial complex, these are social institutions whose primary function is to keep us safe as citizens of the United States. But what happened is when neoliberalism came into legislation, we started getting profit incentives in these social institutions. So people wage wars and they profiteer off the wars that they wage. Halliburton, we just saw that in the mid 2000s. The prison industrial complex were privatizing prisons. So there's for profit incentives for these social institutions that are just there to help us function better and to keep us safe as a society. Until you eliminate the for-profit incentive in these uh, sectors that I'm talking about, there will always be incentives to mass incarcerate, to lock people up for nonviolent drug offenses, to um, keep perpetuating this cyclical confine of social immobility that's happening right now.